I'm Andreas Apitz. This jazz piano video takes the melody of a 251 in minor keys that I posted in video number 13 of my One Hand Voicings series into the realm of drop two voicings. I'm going to show how the line itself, as well as its drop two harmonization, relate to the chords of the progression. I'll make some fingering suggestions and take the line through all 12 keys via the circle of fifths. In video number 13 of my One Hand Voicing series, I introduced a melody line on a minor 2-5-1 progression, which portrays the chords in arpeggios. Here's the line in the key of C minor. Other than before, I will now play the line in quarter notes over whole bar chord changes. Now I am going to voice the melody in drop 2. On the 2 chord D minor 7 flat 5, the melody is an arpeggio of the basic chord from the flat 5th downwards. For the voicing of the first melody note, the flat 5th A flat, I'll put these same notes underneath the melody, the minor 3rd F, the root D, the minor 7th C. This is the chord in close position. Now I'll drop the second voice from the top, which is the minor 3rd F, by an octave. For the next melody note, the minor 3rd F. I'll put the other notes of the chord underneath. The root D, the minor 7th C, the flat 5th A flat. Close position, then drop 2. Next, the root D. The same procedure again. The minor 7th C, the flat 5th A flat, the minor 3rd F. Close position. Drop 2. Then the minor 7th C. And again, flat 5th A flat, minor 3rd F, root D. From close position to drop 2. Played in succession. Now I'd like to adjust the voicing of the third melody note a little bit to improve the parallel motion of the outer voices. I will replace the minor seventh in the lower voice by the minor sixth. There are other situations in which the minor seventh would be the better choice, but here I prefer the minor sixth. Here's the line on the two chord again. The melody line on the five chord G7 altered. as I see it, is also an arpeggio of the voicing of that chord. It contains the third B and the minor seventh F as basic chord tones, as well as the flat ninth and the flat thirteenth as color tones for the altered dominant quality. In fact, if I play these notes simultaneously, 
preferably down here. I get one of my favorite one hand voicings for G7 altered that works perfectly fine with a chord root sounded, for example, by the bass. If I put the A flat at the bottom, it gets obvious that the interval structure of the voicing itself is similar to an A flat minor 6 chord, with A flat as the root, C flat as the minor third, E flat as the fifth, and F as the sixth. Now let's for a moment review the two chord D minor 7 flat 5. The basic chord has the exact same notes as the chord F minor 6. So we can tell that the voicings of both chords 2 and 5 are based on the same kind of voicing structure, which is a minor 6 chord, but built on different roots. Coming back to G7 altered, I'm going to build the voicings. The third is B. Underneath I'll put the flat ninth A flat, the minor seventh F, and the flat thirteenth E flat for close position. Then I drop two. The flat 13 E flat. Underneath the third B, the flat 9th A flat, the minor 7th F. Close position. Drop 2. The minor 7th F. with flat 13, E flat, third B, flat ninth, A flat. Close position. Drop two. The flat ninth, A flat, minus seventh F, flat 13th, E flat, third B. Close position. Drop two. The voicings played in a row. I will make some adjustments again. If I resolve the last voicing of the two chord, into the first one of the 5 chord, there is a repeated note in the lower voice. Here it's A flat. Although each of the voicings is perfectly fine, I would prefer a parallel motion of the outer voices here to support the important guideline in the upper voice. I do this by replacing the flat ninth at the bottom of the 5 chord voicing by the root. Another spot is the third melody note of the 5 chord. For smoother parallel motion of the outer voices, I would replace the flat 13 by the sharp 11th. Here's the line on the 5 chord again. On the one chord, the line is basically a descending arpeggio of a C minor triad. A 
embellished by an enclosure of the root. I'm going to voice the melody with another minor 6 chord, which is C minor 6. Underneath the 5th G, I'll put the minor 3rd E flat, the root C, and the 6th A, in close position. Then drop 2. For the minor third E flat, it's the root C, the sixth A, and the fifth G in close position. Drop two. In terms of voicing, I see the next note, the ninth D as a tension note to the root C. Therefore I will harmonize it like the root, putting the 6th A, the 5th G, and the minor 3rd E flat underneath for close position. Then reinstall the 9th D and drop 2. To voice the next note, the major 7th B, I considered a tension note to the 6th A and put the 5th G, the minor 3rd E flat and the root C underneath. For close position, reinstall the major 7th B in the melody and drop two. For the root C, it's the same harmonization as for the ninth D, close position. Drop two. And the final fifth G, has the same voicing as the first one, just an octave lower. Here are the voicings of the one chord played in a row. I will make an adjustment again to one of the voicings. It's the ninth. For smoother parallel motion of the outer voices, I'll replace the sixth A at the bottom by the major seventh B. Here's the line on the one chord with modified voicings. Let's hear the complete line in drop two harmonization. I'd like to talk about fingerings. As the right hand will be in charge of the upper three of the four voices, it will have to change its position almost for every melody note. This is of course the main challenge of this block chord technique. But every now and then you can take advantage of what I call shared hand position between two or three adjacent voicings. At the beginning of the line I would suggest to play the first voicing with the fingering 2, 3, 5. 
the second one with one, two, four. The shared hand position is this. The arm will support the fingers for each voicing with a smooth sideward movement. Here are the same two voicings fingered without shared hand position. This also is a valuable fingering. It depends on the situation, especially on the rhythm of the phrase. The next spot for a shared hand position is at the transition from the 2 to the 5 chord. I use the fingering 1, 2, 5 and 1, 2, 4. The second finger stays on the same note. The thumb moves towards the hand. I could also use 1, 2, 5 for both voicings. I would still consider this a shared position with a slight contraction of the hand. Another one occurs at the end of the 5 chord. I would use 1, 2, 4 and 2, 3, 5 as fingerings. I would even include the next voicing. Played by the fingers 1, 2, 5 in this shared position as it requires just a little contraction of the hand. The last spot is near the end of the line on the 1 chord. I would use 1, 2, 5 and 2, 3, 5. The shared position requires a slight opening of the hand for the top note of the second voicing. I would keep the right hand fingerings in every key. For the left hand my fingerings are also the same in every key until the one chord. There it always starts on the second finger, then it continues either one, two, four, three and five in the keys of F, C, G, D, A, E and B minor or three, one, three, two and five in the keys of F sharp, C sharp, A flat, E flat and B flat minor. Now that the voicings have been set, I'd like to apply a more syncopated rhythm to the line. Now it's time to take the line through all 12 keys via the ascending circle of fifths.
That's it for now. Thank you for watching. I would appreciate your likes, comments and subscriptions to my channel. Bye, see you next time.